west of downtown Indianapolis lies Allison Point, site of the Mud Water Ski Tour Skier's Edge City Mark Indy Open. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha. Welcome to Hot Summer Nights. Speeds on the water at Indianapolis are nothing close to what you'd find at the old brickyard down the road, but a mistake can be every bit as damaging to one's hopes of a title. With me to call the action here, ESPN water skiing analyst Wayne Grimditch. Wayne, we've got three titles locked up and one to go. Yeah, that's in the women's psalm competition. That's undecided. We'll be watching that closely. However, already in the qualifying rounds, the men have secured their titles. Andy Mapple in the slalom, Sammy Duvall in the jumping, and then David Reinhardt flipped and twisted his way to another victory. Now, the women will watch closely as they try to negotiate a very fast and bumpy course and steer their ski into victory lane. All right, thank you, Wayne. The Cypress Gardens kite is about to come in for a landing, and we're about to watch the newly crowned men's slalom tour champion in action, Andy Mapple, and the rest of the crew when we return to Allison Point Lake. Stay with us. by Mastercraft. Nothing else even comes close. So your nearest dealer for a test drive by Inmar, Inboard Power Technology, and by Toyota, reminding you to always buckle up. Do it for those who love you. subcomponent parts, expert marinization, state-of-the-art manufacturing, corrosion protection at the subcomponent level, two-year limited warranty. At the heart, pure power. Inbar, inboard power technology for the long run. There's just one, and there's no mistake in it. Why don't you and me do some fancy stuff in the night? Oh, with that smile, yeah, one. This is a beautiful dancer. Why, I used to call her Twinkle Toes. Can you do this one? Ooh, that's just one. You're not so bad yourself. One calorie just for me. So for you. Thanks. So for me. to the Bud Water Ski Tour semi-final action in men's slalom. Coming up, head-to-head -head competition between some of the best skiers in the world. As you can see, a very warm day here in Indianapolis, but very little chance of rain, and that's the best news of all. Here are our semi-finalists. Andy Mapple, newly crowned slalom tour champion, will ski against the number two man on tour, Wade Cox, and Chris Lapointe will try to follow up his victory earlier this year against Mick Neville. There is Wade Cox looking cool and collected on shore. There is the man, Andy Mapple, the former world and European champion. There is Chris Lapointe, who won in the San Diego round on tour this year. And our final semi-finalist, Mick Neville. Now let's take a closer look at what slalom skiing is all about, Wayne. In the slalom course, there are eight pairs of boat gates. The boat dissects those gates while the skier zigzags back and forth. Now what makes this event so difficult is that they keep shortening the rope. The boat speed is constant, but when they shorten the rope, it makes it more difficult for the skiers to get outside the buoy. Allison Point is one of the most dramatic sights on tour with large berms on either side of the lake. Andy Mapple will be first out, 29 years of age, at 43 feet of rope length. And it is those steep berms that cause us some backwash in the middle of the course as you watch Andy negotiate a relatively easy line length. He'll have to work his knees to absorb some of the bumps. This is a bumpy and fast race course. And if you think about this like car driving, Andy's trying to accelerate away from the turn and brake going into the turn. And he gets a full six buoys at 43 feet of rope. The 
crowd loved that run. Now here comes Wade Cox, just 23 years of age and technically a skier very much in the mold of Andy Mapple, Wayne. Well, they sure are. They're both about 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 175 pounds, extremely strong and very quick around the buoys. Both right foot forward. You'll notice he has very little upper body motion like Andy Mapple, keeps that free hand close to the handle. Wade has a very quick turn on his onside. This is his offside. Bowie's won three and five, and now he's around number six. And so it's a full pass at 43 feet for Wade Cox. Now there's a look at the berm as we've been talking about. It makes Allison Point Lake a perfect venue for water skiing, but as Wade mentioned, it does affect the water quality. Now here comes Andy Mapple. We've shortened up the rope to 40 feet. Which means Andy has about two and a half feet of extra weight, and he runs into problems around number three. Kind of a strange fall, very weird. Unusual spill for Andy Mapple. Comes around number two, his onside. Good lean through the wakes, changes his edge. This is where he slows down. And right here, he gets on the front of the ski and almost looks like the fin pops out. Kind of a strange fall, perhaps he relaxed in this bumpy water. So two and a half buoys officially for Andy Mapple, who is now 29 years of age, started skiing at age 13, very old by water skiing standards. Now here's Wade Cox. And this has really opened the door for Wade. Very easy to get around number three. He moves right into the final. Andy perhaps not as aggressive as he should be in this kind of water conditions. Wade, very easily done. So a full pass at 40 feet for Wade Cox means he will move into the final. And there is Andy Mapple, probably still wondering what went wrong. A huge crowd on hand here at Allison Point Lake. Here's another look at Wade Cox in action. This from our ESPN buoy cam. A good look at the style that has brought him second place overall in the tour, just a little bit behind Andy Mapple. If not for a poor performance in San Diego, he could be right there. Wade Cox with one victory to his credit on the season. That at Irving, Texas earlier this year. Now here comes Mick Neville from Australia, a man we haven't seen much of in slalom this year. Well, just like the first pairing, this bracket features two skiers that are very closely matched. They are tied. That is, Mick Neville and Crystal Point are tied for third position overall on the tour. Mick Neville stands 5'10". He is the best in the world at that size, and he is very consistent because he adapts well to the conditions, working in his knees quite nicely right here, absorbing the bumps, just like a car's suspension trying to keep the ski in the water. And it's a full pass at 43 feet of tow rope for Mick Neville. Now that 43 feet is as opposed to the 75 feet that a recreational skier would use. Now here is Chris Lapointe with a victory earlier this year at San Diego, hoping to break that tie for third with Mick Neville in the tour standings. This is the preeminent skier of the 1970s, Chris Lapointe, very strong, very much of a thinker too. One reason he has maintained such great slalom performances for such a long time. Think about that, the preeminent skier of the 1970s. He's having his best year ever. It's, it's just absolutely incredible. No one on the tour would have thought at 39 years of age, Crystal Point would be here, but he works very well with his skis, thinks quite a bit about what he's doing when he's out in the water. And Mick Neville's really got to get it going right here because the rope only extends two and a half feet beyond the width of the buoys at this point. Negotiating the bumps beautifully right here, a little bit late, but he holds on to the slack. Mick Neville's best performance this year was a third in round two in Camden, South Carolina, but he's Looking good here at Indy. Now here comes Chris LaPointe at 40 feet. And he's got to get all six. But with a shorter rope, that means everything happens that much quicker. He's a little slow out of number two, carrying more speed in the three. A slower turn. He's going to have to really pull to get outside of number five, and he's not going to get there. Four buoys at 40 feet for Chris LaPointe, and so Mick Neville will advance to the final. And right there, you can see just how short that rope is. He is skiing just behind the boat. Well, we've only got about two and a half feet of extra rope to get outside the buoy, but he started getting bad turns, and that means he had to pull longer into the buoy, carrying more speed, and it's very difficult to make a turn when you're going faster, and especially when you're going faster in bumpy water. Talk about carrying speed. These skiers will routinely double the speed of the boat. That 36 miles an hour is more like 70 miles an hour as they cross the wake, all the while trying to manage up to 1,000 pounds of increased pull on that tow rope. 
absolutely amazing athleticism. And if we use a car analogy, it's like turning the buoy or turning your car at 20 miles an hour, accelerating within two seconds to 60, then back down to 20 to make the next turn in another two seconds. Andy Mapple conferring with wife Dina on shore, but it'll be Wade Cox against Mick Neville in the finals of men's slalom. And we'll be back for that after a quick timeout. Stay with us. Broadway and Mount by the Wall Street Journal. It's all you need besides your own ability to land and do well in the kind of job you've been looking for in a part of the country you'll enjoy at a salary you can be proud of. It's all you need. Get the National Business Employment Weekly at your newsstand or order by credit card and get eight issues by first class mail for $35. Call 800-372-3000. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. Can you handle the August heat of ESPN? Sizzling Sports in August on ESPN. Back in Indianapolis, Bob Varsha and Wade Grimditch with you, ready for men's slalom final, Wade Cox against Mick Neville. Neville in his first final of the season. And here he comes at 40 feet of rope. Mick ran this pass earlier. It's a pass where you use about 85 to 90 percent of your energy to get it done, and that's a great onside turn. Offside turn pulls well there, extends, and just a touch late like he was before, but really no problem. Managing that slack in the rope, Mick Neville has a full pass at 40 feet. And now Wade Cox will try to match him. And this is an event that uses an equal measure of strength and technique. Strength to get outside the buoy, technique to get that ski turned very quickly. Uses his reach and body height to give him more rope, essentially, to get outside the buoy. Grabs a handle, accelerates across the wake, sets that edge to slow down. Just ever so smooth. Nice run for Wade Cox. Wade has lots of reasons to want to do well this weekend, perhaps preeminent among them, the fact that he is newly engaged, we have learned. And now it's going to get that much tougher. We will shorten up the rope to 37 feet, and here comes Mick Neville. Now it's very important that he gets a good start here. If he can do that, he's got a great shot at running the course, going well right here at number three. Well done, coming into four is good side. Gets a little deep and straight and out, and it was too much. The boat pulled him straight, and he lost his edge, and at this line length, which doesn't even reach the buoys, you just don't have that much of a margin. You can see just how short that line is. Mick Neville, incidentally, also has a big event coming up in his life. He and wife Karen are expecting a baby shortly. You know, I got to think that maybe Mick came to number four and was thinking, hey, I'm in such good shape. I'm going to get this one. Uh, perhaps relax a little too much in the bumpy water. You got to stay aggressive. Four buoys at 37 feet is a tremendous mark. And now Wade Cox is going to have to match it or exceed it if he wants to win. Success this season for Wade Cox has come from being relaxed and having fun in practice and being very focused in the competition. And the keenest focus is important right here. Got to get a good turn at number four and outside of five. Any part of five, and he pulls very long and just barely enough to win this afternoon. Fist in the air means Wade Cox has picked up his second tour victory of the season. He won't be able to overtake Andy Mapple for the championship, but he'll take the win nevertheless. Comes in at number four, the, probably the bumpiest buoy on the course, gets really down deep, but he's quick, nimble, and extremely strong to pull himself outside of five. What a save by Wade Cox, his second tour victory of the season to go with second places at Orlando, Chicago, and St. Louis, a third in Camden, South Carolina, 
And but for that bad performance in San Diego when he finished 17th, Wade Cox might well be the men's slalom champion. Here are your final results. Cox over Neville LaPointe and Mapple. And here's Wayne with the winner. Well, congratulations. That was uh, quite a stretch around number five. Uh, thanks, Wayne. I've been wanting to do it really bad from the second spot. It, uh, I think it takes a little off when you, uh, when you go first and the second guy falls. But I went out. Now, my skis just been working incredibly for me all year. And, uh, you know, I went out, and I knew I had to get five, and I did. It's the greatest feeling. Well, you know, the latter part of the season has been tremendous for you. You've won the last two of four stops, and the other two ones you were second in. What's been the difference? Well, every year I seem to get burned out near the end of the year. But this year I just uh, I tried to stay happy. I, I'm engaged now, and so everything's going good off the water as well. Well, congratulations all the way around. Thanks, Wayne. It's turning into a great year for Wade Cox. We'll be back in a moment to meet the man called the dog. It's the first week of spring training, and a bunch of nice old ladies show up. Say cheese. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice, until we started working out. You call that exercising? Hey, Grandma, I don't see you doing it. <gasps> we finished? In your dreams, homeboy. Finally, cold buds for everybody. Adam boy. <laughs> I've been called a fanatic. But fanaticism and Mastercraft boats took me to four world overall championships and a world record. I'm still a fanatic, but now I've got a family. And Mastercraft's new open bow, ProStar 205. It's got AWSA approved performance and room for my family. Mastercraft's new ProStar 205. The boat for fanatics. Hey, mommy. With family. Join us later as ESPN's Hot Summer Nights takes you to Huntington Beach, California for the OP Pro Surfing Championship. The top pros in the world are here and the Miss OP Sports Model will be crowned. It's coming up later right here on ESPN. On the Budwater Ski Tour, there's Hank Amos getting set for men's trick jumping, and there is the man he has been trying to catch all season long, Dave Reinhardt from Defiance, Ohio, the hardest working man in water skiing. Let's take a moment and get to know the man they call the dog. On an average tour weekend, Dave Reinhardt works as hard as a dog. He competes in trick jumping, kneeboard, and skiboard, and between events performs demonstrations in trick skiing and barefoot skiing, all events in which he is a former national champion. I was always interested in diving and gymnastics. Maybe that's how I got into freestyle jumping because it's so similar. In the wintertime, I take gymnastics lessons when I can. Uh, I do it in the fall. And what that does, it helps my freestyle. It gives me more of an air sense. Um, so when I do mess up or I'm trying to learn a new trick, I can perfect it on a trampoline. I can perfect it off a diving board into water where I'm, the chance of me getting injured is slimmer than opposed to going off the ski ramp where the chances of trying to learn a new trick, the risk is much higher. You're probably already familiar with Dave Reinhardt in action without knowing it. He is much sought after as a skiing stuntman and has appeared in a number of movies doing the really scary stuff for the stars. In action films and comedies alike, the athletic ease with which Dave pulls off his stunts belies the weeks of hard work and thought that go into them. A lot of people say that I'm, a, I'm crazy, I'm a daredevil. Not at all. I think whatever, all the stuff that I do is very safe. I know what I'm doing, I know where I'm at. I'm, the only time that I get stupid and get crazy is when I lose control of where I'm at. And I don't like that feeling at all. Ironically, it was away from the water that Dave had his most serious injury. At age 19, while helping a friend with a construction project, he was struck in the eye by a nail, losing all of his depth perception and making his accomplishments that much more remarkable. I think with the fact that I only have one eye is a big disadvantage to me. Uh, certain water conditions, when the water is rough and unequal waves, I can't tell if the way, how far they are and how big they are sometimes. And if the water is really smooth, I see a reflection and I can't focus and tell how far the water is away also. 
So in some cases, it does cause problems. A lesser athlete might have quit, but with the help of his family, Dave lived up to the name of his hometown, Defiance, Ohio. What encouraged me is people said I could never ski again because lacking the depth reception, I could ski, but I could never compete with guys with two eyes. I've been invited several times to come and do demonstrations for the handicap championships because with my eye, I do have a handicap. Despite his handicap, Dave Reinhardt has already won the freestyle jumping title and stands at the brink of a possible overall tour championship. At GMC Truck, we've seen days like this for over eight years and have learned the value of a van that gives you the most room in its class. The added safety of four-wheel anti-lock brakes, the traction of full-time all-wheel drive, and the feeling of security that can only come from a van that's built as strong as a truck. Safari from GMC Truck. More proof of the strength of experience. What if you left all your worries behind? You grab the family, your skis, maybe a picnic lunch. What you'd have is freedom. Introducing the Freedom Machines from sea -Doo. Freedom! Freedom! For your nearest sea -Doo watercraft dealer, check your local yellow pages or call toll-free 1-800-882-2900. Have you seen who's been on Speed Week? Speed Week starts off the thunder every Saturday night. Catch us this week at 7.30 Eastern for the latest in motorsports. You've got the need for Speed Week. Back in Indianapolis, here comes Mario Fosa on his Hydra slide, taking part in the fast-growing sport of kneeboarding. On any lake across the country, you'll see someone strap on one of these kneeboards. It's kind of like a small, very small surfboard. Sometimes it has fins, but when you're performing flips like this or no fins on the bottom, that's a combo from Mario Fosa, the two-time world champion. The king of dizzy, Mario Fosa, one of the stars of the Bud Kneeboard Skiboard Tour. Time now for freestyle jumping presented by SeaWorld. Let's take a look at the rules, Wayne. In the freestyle skiing, the skier has an option of boat speed depending on what trick they're performing. The best two of three jumps scored and its form plus distance times degree of difficulty. First man out of the water is Rusty Stewart. Big wave to the crowd. Showmanship very much a part of freestyle jumping. Those form points can put you over the top. Here's a look at Rusty Stewart's first attempt. Right off the bat, the one ski, full twisting, back Mobius. Excellent distance. He was aggressive, carried a lot of speed, went 99 feet. That's just three feet shy of his personal best. Then he followed up with a one ski back flip. Again, tremendous distance. And he started off very well with 1525, put a lot of pressure on the rest of the field. Now he's trying the 722 full revolutions, and the handle just gets away from him. The highest degree of difficulty in his routine, that's a sixth degree of difficulty. He doesn't ski away, but one of the best performances of the season for him. That's his father in the red t-shirt looking on. Rusty Stewart has been coming back from injury all year long, getting better and better, and he almost pulled that off. Well, he is still scheduled for knee surgery at the end of the year, some complications due to reconstructive ligament surgery. Rusty Stewart up out of the water with a big smile, and why not? He had two terrific tricks. Next man up, this is Jeff Schmick, rapping for what looks like a 720. Before he does that, let's take a look at his first two attempts. Started off with one of the more basic routines and ends up just a little short on the rotation. Tried to stand up, but he didn't get all the way around. He just stops in the water. Amazing how Jeff Schmidt came right out of the bindings. And then on his second jump, a one ski back Mobius, he stuck to the landing, but was a little short on distance. Doesn't score 800 points. That put a lot of pressure on his final attempt, the 720. Head was more up. He kept the handle close and was able to pull it out. That's a very high degree of difficulty. It's a six. He scores very well and vaults into the lead with 16-17. Right here, almost lets it get away, but pulls it in. We haven't seen that double revolution performed very often this year. And now finally, here is the man who defines the term freestyle jumper, Dave Reinhardt. 
undefeated through five events this year, came in second in St. Louis. Reinhardt started off his round very poorly. He just slipped on the ramp, doesn't get the distance. He was 17 feet shorter than Rusty Stewart's one ski back Mobius. However, it is a successful standing jump. There's his mom and dad looking on. Here's his second jump, which was a two ski front full twisting somersault, a very difficult maneuver. He tied his distance record of 99 feet with that, which was important because that trick never scores well on four. With his mom and dad watching from shore now, here is Dave Reinhardt's third attempt, and he is wrapped for a revolution. And currently in second position, 1580 to Dave Schmick, 1617. He needs the one ski version of the front Mobius, and he has a great landing. Usually ends up a little short, and we've seen him tumble up in all various kinds of conditions, but he gets a big score over 1,000 points, 1,900. We've only once seen a score over 1,900 points on tour, and Dave Reinhardt was the man who did it. You know, we call him the dog, but uh, he's more like a cat when he gets up in the air. He always seems to land on his feet. Awkward position necessary to clear the rope on that particular trick, and he does it time and time again. And you can see the reaction in his parents. That's our boy. Now, normally Dave Reinhardt is the last man on the water, but not this weekend. He was out qualified by this man, Hank Amos, who will ski last. Hank has one win to his credit in St. Louis, four second place finishes, but it's that kind of landing that has kept him right on the heels of Mr. Reinhardt. He came back with a full twisting back Mobius, and first time all season that we've seen him dust on a landing. He starts off very poorly, not even 1,400 points after two jumps, which puts a lot of pressure on his last attempt, which he's decided to go for a double front on one ski. Can he get all the way around? And he just ends up a little shy. A big sits mark for Hank Amos, but give him credit, he went after it. The degree of difficulty on this double front flip is 12, the second highest degree of difficulty among all the tricks in the trick jumping repertoire. One more look, now let's get down to the dock and wave. Well, you're looking at a very happy group of people, the Reinhardts. Uh, Dave, another win for you, a great response to uh, somewhat of a falter in St. Louis. Uh, everybody's nipping at your heels. Yeah, there's a lot of young guys coming up and they're really skiing great. And uh, it's always shoving me to do my one ski front mob and that usually puts a clinch on the win. But unfortunately, last week in St. Louis, it was so bad that I ended up getting second even on that. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Reinhardt, uh, I have an idea. You know there's a master craft at stake here. Yes, I do, and I've got my fingers crossed one more. <laughs> what do you think this afternoon? I think it's great. I'm really proud of him, and I'm ready to ride in that mastercraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no pressure on you. Hey, great stuff. I know your, your knee is still very sore. Yes, uh, I just hope you continue. you got one more to go, seven down, so I'm really looking forward to it. Well, that Mastercraft will have to wait until the final round of the season in St. Paul. Here are the final results. Dave Reinhardt, for the sixth time in seven events, today was the day of the dog. We'll be back in a moment with Women's Slalom. Receive up to 50% savings on all your water sports equipment in Bart's free water sports catalog. Skis, vests, wetsuits, gloves, ropes, and knee boards. Call 1-800-342-1700 for O'Brien, Kidder, Connolly, Joby, Body Glove, and other top brands. Call for your free Bart's water sports catalog and give us the name and address of a friend so they can share in the savings too. Call now, 1-800-342-1700. Open your coat, please. Take that thing out slowly and open it. You got some kind of device. We have a possible situation. No, no, we have a situation here. Not a situation. Just touch the button, sir. Quiet, please. It's just a car stereo. Pioneer Car Stereos offer you a detachable face for the ultimate in security. You see, it's a detachable face for the car stereo. It's a matter what these people are. People don't stay at La Quinta Inns just because of the free local calls. Although it's definitely a topic of conversation. Call 1-800-531-5900. La Quinta Inns, America's hotel value. This is La Quinta Inns' new money-saving super value rates coupon. And if you can't find one, just tell them you saw it on TV. Call La Quinta and ask for the new super value rates from $34.50. Crisp, 
Clean. Old Spice. It puts the wind in your sails. Welcome back to Indianapolis on the Bud Water Ski Tour, Skier's Edge, City Mark, Indy Open. I'm Bob Varsha. Now, before we get to women's slalom, let's get down to the shoreline where Wayne has more on slalom technology. Slalom skis, just like people, have their own personality. And in order to improve your skiing performance, a skier tries to match his skiing personality to that of the ski. Someone who knows more about this than any human being on the face of the earth is Chris LaPointe. Chris, what makes up a ski's personality? When we've looked at it, we think there's six performance features that make up the personality of a slalom ski. Uh, first one, the most obvious one, is the concave type itself. How wide it is, how, how deep it is, whether it washes out in the tail area or not, is one of the features. The next one would be the bevel. That's where the sidewall of the ski meets the bottom of the ski. How deep that bevel is, how much roundness there is, maybe it changes the round in the back, again, affects the performance. The perimeter shape, now what I mean by that is the total width in here relative to the middle, relative to the tail. As you widen one section or another, it changes the personality of the ski. The next one would be the rocker itself. Now that's the bow, if you look at this as a straight line, the, the bow off of a straight line on the ski itself. This is a ski of, of moderate rocker. The straighter ski would be almost perfectly straight. Next one would be the flex pattern itself. That's how much overall stiffness there is in a ski. Also, where that stiffness comes from. Maybe a real stiff tip, maybe a stiff tail. Again, it'll, it'll change its personality. Last but not least would be the fin itself. How deep it is, how straight this front edge of the fin is, maybe more bow there, how far forward, how far back it is. It all affects the personality. It's the combination of those six features that make the personality of a slalom ski. Now the real question is, is there perhaps a slalom ski out there that fits my personality? Well, we're still working on that one. Mike. Okay, let me know when you get it done. Okay. Here's a hint, Chris. Start with a short ski. Chris LaPointe, director of O'Brien Research and Development. He does a lot of thinking about skiing. Right now, this is Christy Overton thinking about her upcoming women's slalom semifinal. Here is Tony Neville from Australia. Dina Mapple on the right talking with husband Andy. She will be skiing against Christy Overton. And there is Susie Graham, co-holder of the world record with Jennifer Leachman. Now, Jennifer Leachman, our defending slalom champion, not in the semifinals and has virtually no shot at defending her title. Up out of the water first, this is Dina Mapple, who also co-holds the women's world record. Still rounding into shape after that season off to have a baby. 43 feet of tow rope. But what's important, she is getting better and better with each weekend of skiing. This is the best jumper in the world, the best women's overall skier. That's in slalom tricks and jumping. She's on a new ski this year and improving steadily. And it's a full pass for Dina Mapple. Incidentally, the tour record for women, as Andy Mapple looks on, is three and a half buoys at 37 feet of rope. The world record, one buoy at 35 and a half feet of rope. Here is Christy Overton from Oviedo, Florida at 43 feet. She's coming off a poor performance in St. Louis, and because of that, it's made the women's overall slalom race that much closer. This is someone who has not won on tour yet. She's won two of the major independent slalom tournaments, but she's had three second places this season. And she gets a full pass at 43 feet, so we'll pull in the rope, shorten it up to 40 feet, and do it again. Here comes Dina Mapple. Very important for Dina here to get a good number one and particularly a good number two. She's improved this side of her course. Nice two coming into number three. Water a little choppy, kind of slow. Some slack rope having there very late and narrow into number four. Four full buoys for Dina Mapple at 40 feet. Trying to improve on her best performance of the year. A fourth place. She's done it three times. With so much slack around number three, she had to delay her turn fast and narrow into four and just too much speed in order to negotiate the turn. That matches Dina Mapple's qualifying performance. Four buoys at 40 feet. Now here comes Christy Overton, the top qualifier for this event with two buoys at 37 and a half feet. This is a pass that Wade Cox has worked with Christy in practice time and time again, running it in any conditions, any situation. She gets around number four in good shape here. And outside of five, that'll be enough to advance into the final. Just effortless, having no stumbles along the way. Christy's record in competition this year, a third, a second, a third, a second, a second, and then a tenth in St. Louis 
as Wayne mentioned, so she would desperately like to get her championship charge back on track here at Indy. Now here comes Christie at 37 feet. She's going to try for the best performance in order to have the advantage in the final. And down she goes. And that could also give her some bonus points going towards the tour overall title. Christy Overton has made it into the final. Here's a look at that pass at 37 feet. Well, this line length, once again, the rope doesn't reach the buoys. You need just the right technique. She came into number two, got a little bit deep, and then straightened up. But she's going to be very satisfied with that performance going into the final. In fact, that's the rope length that decided the men's slalom final. So Christy Overton really skiing well. Now let's learn who her opponent will be in the final in a matchup between a pair of two-time winners on tour this year, Tony Neville, victor in South Carolina and in Irving, Texas, and Susie Graham, who won the season opener in Orlando and also in St. Louis. There is Tony, wife of men's jumper Bruce Neville, 43 feet of rope. Tony Neville, like Christy Overton, had a chance on our last stop in St. Louis to separate themselves from the rest of the field, namely Susie Graham and Jennifer Leachman. But she faltered like Christy, ended up six. So this is her opportunity to regain a better position going for the slalom overall title. She gets a full pass of six buoys at 43 feet. There's husband Bruce on the shore. Now you're on board with the boat driver. The women's boat operates at 34 miles an hour. There is Susie Graham, co-holder of the world record with Dina Mapple at 43 feet. And this pass gives the skiers a better chance to settle in on their ski, stand right at the different phases of the turn, coming into the buoy, getting forward, slowing down, rocking back and away from the boat through the wakes. Accelerating here, slowing down, very smooth run for Susie Graham. Susie Graham appears to be back on her game coming off that victory in St. Louis. As I mentioned, she opened the season with a win in Orlando, but was then fifth, sixth, sixth, and fourth. Now here comes Tony Neville at 40 feet of rope. And you can bet at this line length, Tony Neville will be tenacious to the end. She sometimes can have technical flaws, but she just keeps hanging on, taking one buoy after another, a little slow out of number three, progressively slower out of four. She's going to need a big turn on five, and she can't get outside the buoy. Four buoys at 40 feet. There is Christy Overton's father, Parker, talking with Bruce Neville on the shore. And another look at Tony's run. Now, the bumpy water conditions we're seeing here on Allison Point disrupts the normal flow of the water across all those characteristics that Chris LaPointe was talking about that make up the personality of the ski. She gets progressively later and is just not able to settle herself down and slow the ski down to make a quick turn. Tony Neville having a great season. She came into this year without a tour victory. She's not only picked up her first, she's picked up her second, and she's in the running for a championship. Now here comes Susie Graham at 40 feet. Now should the skier get a slow turn out of the buoy, they can compensate for that and make up ground by a longer pull, just as she did coming into number three. A little late into number four, gets a pretty good turn. Can she get outside of five? And she does. She will be in the final. Susie Graham with five buoys will advance to the final to to meet Christy Overton. Now Susie's run was not without incident, Wayne. Sometimes Susie has a tendency to break at her waist, dip her head and shoulder right here. She ends up getting some good angle, but then gets pulled out, but not enough to prevent her from getting outside of five. Great abdominal strength, and that's what you need to be a co-holder of the world record. Susie Graham, grateful to be in the final. There's Christy Overton. She and Susie are now the leaders in the run for the women's slalom title. Jennifer Leachman did not qualify. Tony Neville has gone out in the semis. So it'll be Christy Overton and Susie Graham who will be watching to determine our eventual series champion. And even though Christy Overton has a higher average performance than Susie Graham, Susie is close in the standings because of her great performances, gaining a lot of bonus points in early rounds. We'll take a quick time out and come back for the finals of Women's Slalom. We'll leave you with a look at the Hall of Fame and Museum at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Stay with us. People shouldn't do drugs. They can make you forget things, like which animals have have stripes. And your body might um get clumsier, so you can't jump rope as good. Drugs can get you in big trouble. You could go to principal's office or go to jail. 
then you can't watch TV or eat pizza. Recess is good. Hamsters are good. Birthday parties are real good. Drugs are bad. I wouldn't do drugs. Lots of doctors in your area who can help you decide if Rogaine is right for you. You'll also receive a $10 certificate as an incentive to see your doctor. For your free videotape, it gives you the complete story on Rogaine with Minoxidil. And your $10 certificate, call toll-free 1-800-678-6155. So what are you waiting for? Make the call today. Nigel Mansell could clinch the World Driving Championship with a record ninth victory of the season. But will the notorious turns at the Grand Prix of Hungary slow him down? Find out Sunday morning live on ESPN. The 50 Yard. Indoor War. The rock and roll fury of arena football. The playoffs continue Saturday night on ESPN. on the Bud Water Ski Tour at Indianapolis, World Center of Horsepower. Speaking of horsepower, here is one horsepower towing a skier. In some uh, amateur videography presented to us from the tour representatives, somewhere on the Atlantic shore, someone can say, Trigger was once my tow boat. You can have fun all kinds of ways in water sports. Here on Allison Point, it's time for the women's slalom final. Pitting Susie Graham against Christy Overton and the winner to have a very firm grip. Although they will not clinch the overall women's slalom tour title. At 43 feet of rope, here comes Susie Graham. Well, you're very accurate in saying they have a firm grip on the competition and they do have a firm grip on the handle. These are the two strongest women skiers in the field. Powerful through the wakes and fine technique display there at 43 feet. Susie Graham with a lot of flair. And now it will be Christy Overton's turn. A look at that berm shows you just how dramatic this facility is. The skiers approach from the spectators left or right and they really can't see them until they hit that gate. Two right foot forward skiers. This is her offside coming into her onside. Right foot forward skiers tend to be more well balanced throughout the course. Nice, smooth, solid edges from Christy Overton. Mom and dad on the shore. Parker looks a little bit nervous there, Wayne. Well, you know, this means a lot. I think that whoever wins this competition really is in a nice position for the overall title. So this is very serious coming down to the wire here. Susie Graham at 40 feet, boat speed constant. She'll be accelerating to about 50 miles an hour through the wakes, edging away, never on a flat ski. Gets pulled out a little bit. The boat doesn't wait for you, and she lets go, which is kind of a surprise. Usually she'll go for it all the way. Three buoys at 40 feet for Susie Graham. Let's take another look. Well, as I mentioned to you, the boat speed is constant. You make an error or any kind of mistake, it doesn't wait for you. Hesitation delays your turn. You go way past the buoy. You can see there. Now she's got to pull long to have enough width to get outside the buoy. She didn't have enough. She let go. But she didn't miss by much. On the shore, Parker and Becky Overton looking nervous. Christy Overton at 40 feet of rope will try to make three buoys. Any part of number four will give her her first tour victory and put her in excellent position for the tour overall title. She's great coming out of number three. Around four, she will win this afternoon and go on to maybe run the whole course, and she does. A full six buoys at 40 feet gives Christy Overton her first tour victory. Wade Cox, her coach on the shore, along with Christy's parents. That's a very relieved looking group. In fact, let's take another look at the reaction of Parker Overton to Christy's success. Yes! Now, Christy Overton has the option of continuing in order to pick up that bonus point for best single performance of the weekend. She's going to take a run now at 37 feet. Remember, she got one and a half buoys in the semi. And she lets go of the handle. She'll get one and a half here and pick up that bonus point. A great day for the Overton family. In fact, a great day for the pairing of Christy Overton and her coach and training partner, Wade Cox. We mentioned earlier that they trained together. Wade won the men's slalom today, and with this pass, Christy Overton wins the women's slalom. One of the youngest skiers on tour. 
She'll graduate in December from the University of Central Florida with a degree in marketing. And Christy Overton is quick to credit Wade Cox right there in the background, our men's slalom winner, with helping her become a better competitor in the slalom. Wade has made his way down to the dock to greet our winner. Well, come on in here, champ. It took you three tries, three second places, but uh, this one must have felt really good. Yeah, it felt really good. Um, Susie's been skiing really good all weekend, and I've, I've been feeling really good, too. And so we tied yesterday, and then we were talking last night. We were hoping we could keep going at it today. Well, you know, the, the water conditions have been choppy, bumpy, windy, smooth throughout the season, and you always look very steady. Well, I've just Wade, I've been skiing a lot with Wade Cox, and he's just been teaching me to relax. And finally, I took his advice this weekend, and I quit worrying about the points for the year because that's all I've been thinking about. And finally, it, you know, it came together. Well, my ca if my calculations are right, and I've checked it uh, with a few other people, you probably have the lead at this point, but it's a narrow lead going into the final stop. Yeah, um, I believe just a few points, maybe four or five points. All right, well, you should have a big confidence boost going into St. Paul. Congratulations. Uh, thanks a lot. Congratulations indeed to Christy Overton. After a third, a second, a third, a second, a second, and a tenth, she has that first victory of the season and a big leg up towards the overall slalom championship. We'll be back for Men's Jump. Dalio belts help you get your back in that last little bit. It really helps at short line. Believe me, just wear the belt. There's just one, and there's no mistake in it, one. Why don't you and me do some fancy stuff in the night? himself on board the Nina. That's a mug from Long John Silver's. Just 99 cents with any meal. I have a complete set. We just discovered a complete set of artifacts. Go fish, Long John Silver's. Chicago's Southside Swagger, Frank Thomas, Oakland's home run king, Mark McGuire, part of ESPN's Tuesday Night Doubleheader. down to the final event here in Indianapolis, the Men's Jump, presented by Inmar, the engine that powers the Bud Water Ski Tour. Now on Saturday, in qualifying for the jump, Bruce Neville from Queensland, Australia, produced one of the outstanding performances of the weekend. That is a 200-foot jump, still the standard by which jumps are measured. Neville has just been dialed in for the last couple of weeks. Coming off of St. Louis, he has found that right position every time. That's not only a good jump, that is our Toyota Radical Maneuver of the Week. The man from down under goes 200, and that's good enough for us. Congratulations, Bruce Neville from Toyota. I love what you do for me. Just a little taste of what's to come. There is Scott Ellis on shore trying to get his career back on track. There is the man, Sammy Duvall. Not the top qualifier this week. There's Carl Robert. Looking like maybe he knows something none of the rest do. The reigning world record holder from Canada, Jarrett Llewellyn. And the man who has produced one 200-foot jump already, Bruce Neville. And these are the heavyweights of water skiing. They'll be flying at the ramp at about 70 miles an hour. The boat speed, however, is half of that. The ramp, 16 degrees. It looks like a wall when you're right on top of it. The best of three jumps will score. This is about distance. Form is only important as far as it is related to being in a good position to get distance. First up, Scott Ellis, one of the great young jumpers in America right now, but having his problems, Wayne. Since winning the tour title in 1990, he's had all sorts of problems, but he's starting to round back into form. He sat back a little bit on his first jump, but then responded well. 
or the second lead. Looking very much like Glenn Thurlow, the former world record holder from Australia. 185 feet, his best effort. Here comes his third attempt. A little narrow at the start, a better kick, but not the speed. He didn't get wide at the start, didn't have enough time to generate speed to the base of the ramp. Unlike figure skaters and high jumpers, a water skier doesn't use his calf when springing off the top of the ramp. It's just a quadricep and low back movement. And Scotty has one of the best springs in the business. Scott Ellis's best effort, 185 feet. Now here comes Carl Roberge from Orlando, Florida at 6'1", big for a jumper. He is big and very, very powerful. He can punch out a jump with the best of them. A true heavyweight in the field, has kind of a resisting type spring. Slipped out terribly on the first one, 170, but he got his left shoulder down a touch better on the second jump. He carries more speed to the ramp than any of the skiers. That was 189, which set him well for his final move to the ramp. This right here, his turn is like a slalom turn. I think it's one of the best turns in the business. Gets great angle, immediate acceleration. Good pull off the top, better kick. And a long jump for Carl Roberge, who lands on his back but pulls it out. 192 feet, a terrific effort. Just gives you an idea of the trajectory from our buoy cam. About 22 feet up in the air, landing it better than the boat speed, hitting the ramp at 70 and landing at about 45 miles per hour. They need these full-length body suits just to keep all the parts together. Now here is Sammy Duvall, winner in most of the competitions this year, but hitting a bit of a bad patch right now. He has won four of six, but lost the last two of three to Neville. He is on the ropes. Bruce Neville has been hitting him very hard. Sammy is a little bit questioning of his positions, but he locked down a solid opener of 191. Sammy Duvall traditionally gives it his best effort on the opener, but his second jump was even better, 197. And even though his skis looked terribly spread at the top, his legs were straight, indicating a great lift. And it is speed and lift that gives you your distance. Now here comes Sammy Duvall on his third and final attempt. Not as wide as on his second one, and he was sitting back. Less speed and poor body position, not anywhere close to the 197. 176, Sammy Duvall's third jump. Keep in mind, he is in the running with Dave Reinhardt for the Mastercraft Pro Star Award. The high point skier at the end of the year is going to win a Mastercraft tow boat. Sammy Duvall is done, and onto the water comes the world record holder, the man who took it away from Sammy Duvall, five foot six inch Jarrett Llewellyn from Canada, who has jumped 207 feet, but not in the early rounds here. Since jumping into the record books back in May, he has had all sorts of problems. A broken toe, and then in St. Louis, he twisted his knee. Continue to have problems here. Didn't have his left shoulder down, coming to the ramp, slipped out towards the crowd, and only a jump of 180 feet. Now here comes Jarrett Llewellyn's final attempt. A lot of the skiers having difficulty getting wide because of the narrow and tight setup. They're not getting the right speed to the ramp, and that's not helping them get into the right position off the top of the ramp. 180 feet, the best effort for Jarrett Llewellyn. This trophy to the men's jump champion will not go to him on this day. We'll be back with more of men's jumping as the Bud Water Ski Tour continues from Indianapolis, Indiana. Stay with us. Somehow, people have gotten the idea the new Toyota Paseo is a wildly exciting sp Dale Jarrett edged out Davey Allison and set a record for the closest finish in NASCAR history. Who will take the checkered flag this year at the Champion Spark Plug 400?
Summer Nights is brought to you by Mastercraft. Nothing else even comes close. See your nearest dealer for a test drive. By Inmar, inboard power technology. And by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a Bud. It's the OP Pro Surfing Championship from Honey...